Okay, we are back. This is Tech Math 2. We're on section 7.5. We're in the red book. And we're looking at page 317 in the red book. So they're giving us these equations that have square roots, radicals in them, and multiple variables. And so now they want us to solve these equations. So this is really heavy in algebra. You're going to have to use your algebra. Isolate variables and divide by the numbers in front. So they want us to solve for D. So here's D. We're working equations. When you have an equation, you can square both sides of the equation. What that does is that square kind of wipes out the square root. So on this side, we just have A plus 2D. On this side, we have H squared P squared. Now we want to solve for D. So just like how we would solve if it was 5 plus 2D equals 10, you know, you'd subtract this and divide by that. That's exactly what we're going to do. Subtract A. And you can't actually subtract it because they're unlike terms. And then you're going to divide by 2. And then that's it. You can't actually divide because we don't know what they are. So H squared, P squared, minus A very similar to what we did in the sections before to isolate the variable and so on. We just had this extra step to begin with. Same dog, different fleas. <clears throat> this time they have V sub F squared. That's what they want us to solve for. So again, we're going to square both sides of the equation. V naught squared, that's just V sub zero. It's pronounced V naught. Um, this gets my, that stuff out. Now, just like what we did here, we're going to isolate this variable. So we're going to add 2AS to both sides, but you cannot add that. You know, you can't combine it. You can add it, but it can't be combined because they're unlike terms. So now we have V naught squared plus 2AS is equal to V sub F squared. And so we don't want that squared on there, so we're going to take the square root of both sides. Officially, algebraically, there's a plus or minus here. You'll note that, you know, in my work when I do that, <clears throat> on like the review and stuff, once in a while I'll put it there. Mostly I don't because we're going to cancel it out anyway because this has to be a positive value. So V sub F is equal to the square root of V naught squared plus 2AS. <clears throat> that is it. We cannot take that square root on the V sub V naught um, squared because of this plus sign. You can never distribute a square root over a plus or a minus sign. You can only do that, like separate them out when they're being multiplied. Then you can do perfects and leftovers and, and you know, simplify. But when it's a plus or a minus like that, you can't do it. So here we are again, square both sides. <clears throat> so we end up with Z squared minus R squared equals 2 pi FL times 2 pi FL is 4 pi squared f squared l squared and we subtract z squared from both sides so you have negative 1 r squared is equal to uh, negative z squared plus 4 pi squared f squared l squared and now this negative is still in front of the r squared. So before we do the square root, we gotta divide everything by negative one. So you get this, r squared is equal to z squared minus four pi squared f squared l squared. And then we're gonna do the square root. Again, there's a plus or minus, but because of the domain restrictions on the real world, it's only the positive, so we don't even worry about the negative. 
So we have r is equal to the square root of z squared minus 4 pi squared f squared l squared. And no, you cannot simplify anything inside of that square root sign because of that plus or that minus, in this case, the minus. So that's it. If it was all being multiplied, then yeah, then we could basically take everybody out of there. All right, so that was seven five. Let's take a look at seven six. So on 7, 6, same kind of concept here. Uh, let's look at 43. It's just they're playing around D over the square root of AP equals V. And they want us to uh, <clears throat> solve for A. So they kind of have to tell you what to solve for because there's so many variables in here. If there was only, we're used to sometimes only having one variable and then it's obvious what to solve for. But because these are all variables, they have to kind of identify which one you want to isolate. <clears throat> all right, so let's cross multiply and solve, get this out of the way here. V square roots of AP equals D. So we got rid of that square root from being in the denominator. Now, we want to get the square root by itself. So divide both sides by V. So you've got square root of AP is equal to D over V. All right? Now, let's square both sides. That'll get that A out of the square root sign. And so that squared and the square root cancel each other off. We have AP is equal to D squared V squared, because remember that's D over V times D over V. So D times D is D squared, V times V is V squared. And now, ah, this is a little tricky. We could divide both sides by P, but what that's gonna do is just put a P down here. You have V squared P. Another way of looking at it, which might be a little easier, when you have this, instead of dividing both sides by P, when you've got a fraction on the right side here, multiply it by 1 over P. It's the same thing. Multiplying by 1 over P is the same as dividing both sides by P. But here, it, it makes a little more sense to look at it in that this form. D squared, V squared, P. Now, I've had students say, yeah, I don't care. I can just go divide it by P. I'll just put a P down there and then just circle my answer. That's fine. You can do it that way too. This is just a, a, a slightly different way of looking at the same procedure that a lot of students find a little less confusing. So usually you invoke that when you're, you've got, you know, something like this, even, even with numbers. When it's like 5x is equal to 1 third or something, Instead of saying that's 1 15th because I divided the bottom by 5, you, you think of it as multiply by 1 5th, and 1 5th times 5 is 1x, and you know, top times top, bottom times bottom, 1 15th. So it isn't just when you're working with all variables. All right, uh, let's get that was 43. Uh, let's take a look at 47 also. And so for 47, we've got D equals M minus the square root of V, and they want us to solve for V. So again, the reason I'm demonstrating this one is I didn't, the book really doesn't do a great job of explaining this. You have to divide everything by, so we got subtracted and we isolated the V, but there's still a negative in front of it. So before we go square on both sides, we have to divide everything by negative one. That's gonna flip these signs. 
So this is going to be now negative d plus m equals the square root of v. That the book never writes the negative first. So they always go like this. But when you look at it as dividing by 1, and they never show this step in between. That's why I'm doing this one in your notes here. You divided everything by negative 1. It was negative d plus m. Then it's m minus d. So like this confuses students because they show the divide by 1 and the divide by 1, but instead of showing this step and then switching them around, they just immediately just go from there to there. And then students are like, well, what happened? It, it just moved it or something. And we didn't. We didn't swap those or substitute or anything. It's we divided everything by negative and then just wrote the negative one second. Okay. Uh, square both sides. And that's tricky on this one because now you have m minus d quantity squared equals v. Um, we could put that down as our answer. Oh, that is all they did for their answer. Okay. Then, I mean, this is fine. You could have also done this if you wanted to flex your algebra muscles. Remember how that would work? That would be m squared minus md minus md plus d squared. And then we'd have m squared minus 2md plus d squared. So that would just be a multiplied out version, but in your book they just left it like that. So I guess that's fine. All right. Then we're on to 7-7. Seven, seven. <clears throat> yeah, I think we'll break it here. That'll be on our next video.